Oh, good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. I was going to show you some of my favorite portraits in this gallery, but we seem to have encountered an infestation of ravens. So while I take care of the situation, why don't I show you another of my two favorite portraits from the museum on tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. Well, these are two of my favorite portraits from the Poe Museum's collection, and not just because they're pretty nice paintings, but also because of the enormous role they played in Poe's life. This is John and Francis Allen. That's A-L-L-A-N, not E-N. Remember that. John Allen was born in Scotland in 1779, came to the United States as a teenager to seek his fortune in the New World. And before long, he started the Ellis and Allen Farm, a tobacco export business. His wife, Frances, was local. She was born about where Virginia Beach is today. She was orphaned at an early age and taken by her sister and her sister's husband who lived in Richmond. And that's where she met Mr. Allen here. They were married in 1883, which is about the time this portrait was painted. So this is a young, early 20s, John Allen, just really with everything going his way. He hasn't met Poe yet. Poe hasn't been born. He won't be born until 1809. So they're doing pretty well in their business. And that's when Poe steps into the picture. Poe's mother was a traveling actress who performed here in Richmond. And Mrs. Allen was a huge fan of hers, a theater goer. And people in Richmond just loved Mrs. Poe, used to watch her performances. She got great reviews. So when Mrs. Poe got sick, Mrs. Allen started organizing some of her friends to start bringing meals to the dying actress. And after Mrs. Poe died, a couple of them, she and her friend Mrs. McKenzie, offered to give Edgar and his little sister homes. So she took a shining to Edgar, took in the little two-year-old boy. Now she didn't have any children of her own, really wanted someone to take care of. The problem is, he did have kids with women who weren't his wife. He didn't really want to take in this little Edgar, but his wife seems to have talked him into it. And Mrs. Allen, she just adored the precocious boy, who already by age of three was reciting poetry beautifully. And it's said that Mrs. Allen was so proud of her darling Eddie's elocution that at dinner parties, she used to put the toddler up here on her dinner table to recite poetry for her guest. So imagine him reciting an early version of The Raven or Annabelle Lee in his squeaky little toddler voice. Now, Alan here used to boast about the young Edgar's brilliance, his intellect. This is before Poe became a difficult teenager, and Alan was still kind of proud of him. But Alan here, we know, he loved to throw dinner parties. And the more lavish, the better. He spent a lot of money on alcohol. We found that from his files. But he also had a great collection of glassware. So let's take a seat at his dinner table and enjoy one of his banquets. Now, these are just some of the pieces we have from Poe's boyhood home to show you just what sort of setup the Allens would have had. These are salt cellars, which you would find on the dinner table to hold your salt. These are decanters. And here's a drinking glass. And we know that Mr. Allen entertained often, and he loved to show off his wealth. Right behind us, we have a chair from the Allen house, a table, even a Baroque painting of the Holy Family, a European good that would have set back Mr. Allen quite a bit. So Allen, even when he didn't have a lot of money, liked to portray himself as very wealthy, really liked to put on a show. And if you sat down at one of the Allen dinner parties, you'd be surrounded by the leading names of Richmond society, including decorated war veterans, Supreme Court judges, lawyers. 
the creme de la creme of Richmond society. And Mr. Allen's really trying to impress him. So imagine one night when they all sat around the table and Mr. Allen's trying to show off and something really terrifying happened. A blood-curdling shriek pierced the air and into the room bounded a young girl, Mr. Allen's business partner's daughter, pursued by a tiny specter. He chased her around the room several times until one of the attendees, a War of 1812 veteran, General Winfield Scott, rose, struck the ghost on the head, ripped off the sheet and revealed it was just little Eddie. Pulling one of his notorious pranks, even from an early age, he loved to scare people. Poe loved making mischief growing up. I think the worst thing he ever did, they said he went on somebody else's property at night and shot their pet birds. I don't know why he did that. One of his classmates said, Poe is a leader among boys who taught me to do many a forbidden thing for which I was punished. Which sounds about right. And the older Edgar got, the closer to his teenage years, the less patience Mr. Allen had with him. Now, unfortunately, as so often happens in Poe's life, a woman he really cared about, who meant a lot to him, Mrs. Allen was very sickly. She probably suffered from tuberculosis. There's also speculation that she had asthma, but she had some kind of chronic problem, which in the day, they really couldn't do much about. She used to take frequent visits to the healing waters of the springs out in Western Virginia and West Virginia and just soak in smelly water. The idea back then was if the water really stank, if it smelled like rotten eggs, it was probably good for you and you should take a bath in it. But ultimately, it really didn't help. And she was only in her mid-40s when she died. And this portrait was painted probably about that time. The artist was Robert Sully, who's the nephew of Thomas Sully, who's the one who painted this portrait. And we know that Robert Sully was studying art in England until about 1828. And she died in 1829, so if he painted this portrait from life, he painted it probably in the last year or so of her life, after her body's already been ravaged by tuberculosis, after she's already had chronic health problems for decades. So this is her in her dying days, and this is how she would have appeared probably when Poe last saw her in 1827, sick of putting up with John Allen's demands. Allen was a little bit fed up with Poe by this time too. Poe just ran away from home, enlisted in the U.S. Army under the name Edgar A. Perry, and eventually was stationed out at Fort Monroe, which still stands just just about an hour and a half east of here in Hampton. And he heard that Mrs. Allen here was dying and that her last wish was that she could see her beloved Edgar one last time before she died. He made it back here a day late for her funeral. Now she's buried right here in Richmond's Shaco Hill Cemetery, just a few miles from the museum. And you can imagine this is a place the 20-year-old Poe would have visited to see her grave. By that time, he'd already lost his mother, his first love, and his foster mother. So his visits here must have been especially poignant. And we know that Shaco Hill Cemetery is a place he visited throughout his life. He liked to take Sunday afternoon strolls here with his wife. So Poe would have likely been standing or kneeling just about where we are right now on his many visits to contemplate the woman who nurtured his talent from an early age. The next one back here is John Allen, slightly larger stone and past him, his second wife. Before his death in 1834, she had three children who became his legitimate heirs, so there was no need to include Edgar in the will. And that, besides the fact that Alan seems to have really been over Poe by that time, explains why Poe was left out entirely. 
Well, I'm pleased to report that my good friend Pluto here was able to help me take care of that pesky little raven infestation. And if you'd like to help out the Poe Museum, why not become a patron at patreon.com slash Poe Museum, where you'll have access to exclusive Poe Museum content and see videos like this before anyone else. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the Curator's Crypt.